morning, my friends. Your old pal, Jordan the Lion. You probably notice I'm wearing my Trader's World sunglasses, so you probably are guessing that today is a special Patreon vlog, and you would be right. Today, I'm going to be doing my vlog for Jennifer Sisson, and Jennifer had asked me the other day, will I ever do a vlog on Clara Bow or Dorothy Stratton? Well, today's your day. Today, we are going to go see the house that Dorothy Stratton and her husband Paul shared and where Dorothy's 20-year-old life was ended. Days with Jordan the Lion begins now. There's the joster. Taking the joster out for his morning walk. There's the stuff that Crenshaw Cowboy. In August of 1979, the Playmate of the Month would be a woman known professionally as Dorothy Stratton. In 1980, she would be named Playmate of the Year, and by August of 1980, she would be murdered by her husband, Paul Snyder. Dorothy Stratton was originally born Dorothy Hogue Stratton in Canada, and Dorothy's home life was a little bit tumultuous. Her father left when she was young at the age of three, and then she would eventually have a stepfather who would become abusive, and her mother would take the her and her sister and younger brother to go off and live on their own. And so Dorothy would eventually basically become the caretaker for her younger brother and sister, and never had any um, interest from boys. She was very plain looking and eventually would get a job at the Dairy Queen in her town and would be noticed there by a man named Paul Snyder. Now Paul Snyder is what a lot of people would consider to be a small-time hustler, even some would have called him a pimp, and said that he found an interest in Dorothy and saw a way to exploit her saw a meal ticket out of her and would go on to show her a ton of attention and basically attempt to, in most descriptions, brainwash her into believing that she couldn't do anything without him. Now Paul originally met Dorothy when she was underage and one of the first things that he would do is he would um, gain her trust, give her almost a fatherly figure that she had longed for, that male figure in her life, and then he would start sleeping with her and talk her into doing a nude photo shoot to which he himself would forge her mother's signature in the consent forms. Paul Snyder had actually seen an ad from Playboy magazine looking for their 25th anniversary centerfold and he contacted a photographer made a deal with them to take these nude photos of Dorothy. They sent them off and the very next day after Playboy received them, they contacted Dorothy and flew her out to Hollywood. Now Dorothy was sweet, nice, young, innocent, and naive, and Paul exploited that. He made her believe that her destiny was to do Playboy, it was to do this, so when she came out, she ended up meeting with Hugh Hefner, uh, signing a contract, and they considered having her as the 25th anniversary Playmate originally, but once they met her and realized how kind of naive and green she was, they thought maybe it was a little bit too much um, attention or maybe too much responsibility for her and they would eventually make her the Playmate of the Month for August of 1979. Now Paul, sensing that his his power over Dorothy might be leaving, he talks her into marrying him, and then he comes and joins her in Los Angeles. Now he immediately starts going to the Playboy Mansion with her, and starts forcing himself upon people, schmoozing, dropping names, and basically making everyone feel uncomfortable. 
Hugh Hefner has said in many interviews that Paul just stuck out like a sore thumb and the only reason that anyone really ever tolerated him was because they liked Dorothy so much. Now Paul would not only use his newfound meal ticket to gain access to celebrities in the hopes of getting them to invest in his schemes and his ideas, but he would also use Dorothy's money. See, when Dorothy signed with Playboy, she was given some money for the initial shoot, but then Hugh Hefner also gave her a job at the Playboy Club. And through this job, um, she would wear an outfit where it had cuffs on the arms and it would have a necktie, uh, like a bow tie, and Paul would actually use this idea to invent the Chippendales. He was the originator of the Chippendales, the male dancing review, and was actually nudged out by someone who um, had more money and invested in that company, um, just basically forced him out. Now eventually Paul's overbearingness would lead Dorothy to kind of fall for another man. She would be filming a movie with John Ritter directed by Peter Bogdanovich and Peter Bogdanovich after meeting Dorothy at the Playboy Mansion cast her in this movie. It was originally supposed to be a bit part but he liked her so much that he increased the part to much, much more. Now some would actually accuse Peter of increasing her part basically to keep her on set and to kind of coerce her to fall in love with him. But she would end up doing that anyway at the age of 20 years old and she was basically getting tired of Paul. When she met Paul, she was, like I said, she was so naive and young. She really didn't know what she wanted out of life and as she was experiencing life and seeing him take advantage of her, booking her on signing events without her knowledge, um, various things and then just blowing through her money even to the fact uh, or the point where her financial advisor put him on a on an allowance of what he could get out of her um, Paul would basically abuse this to no end and Dorothy would start um, going through the motion of serving him with a separation now everyone involved has said that this point Paul basically started to lose his mind. He started to obsess over threatening Dorothy, threatening anyone involved with Dorothy, buying guns, planning on killing people, hiding out in the bushes of Peter Bogdanovich's estate to try and kill him. And through all of this, Hugh Hefner would basically be credited as being the person that would introduce Peter Bogdanovich to Dorothy Stratton. Now Paul, feeling Dorothy slip away, uses more of her money and invests in an s and um, torture slash sex device, a machine that you could strap someone into and would try and market this unsuccessfully. However, he did keep one. He did keep one and he would keep it in the house that we're going to be seeing here very shortly. Now at this time, Paul and Dorothy were actually still living together, though Dorothy had moved out from this house. But at the time that they were living here, they were actually sharing it with another couple. So eventually Paul would be now banned and turned away at the gates of the Playboy Mansion and this would also drive him insane. Dorothy realizes that she has to do something and so without anyone's knowledge, without Peter Bogdanovich's knowledge, she decides to have one last meeting with Paul and end it with Paul and serve him with divorce papers. Now there's a very good movie called Star 80 about this whole episode and Eric Roberts plays Paul Snyder and I think he gives one of the most accurate depictions I could have imagined. So if you are curious as to what Paul would have been like, give that movie a watch. Dorothy would leave her home that she was sharing with Peter Bogdanovich with her younger sister and would drop her younger sister off and then come over to this house and meet with Paul Snyder for the very last time. Now like I said, by all accounts Paul was extremely attached, saw Dorothy as um, almost a meal ticket or his, his connection to the celebrity life and that connection was now falling away. You can watch um, video online of 
um, old footage from the Playboy Mansion parties where he's trying to hold her hand and she's pulling her hand away. She just doesn't want to be seated next to him, doesn't want to talk to him. And decided to come in August of 1980 at the age of 20 years old and say goodbye to Paul. Now right here across from the house is the 10 freeway and it's said that when the gunshots went off because of the freeway no one in the neighborhood heard it. So Paul Snyder made a appointment with Dorothy and asked his two roommates to leave while he talked sense into Dorothy and talked her into not leaving him. The two roommates went off to have lunch and would be the ones that would find the bodies when they came back. Dorothy arrived at this house right here that she shared with Paul to get the last of her things and to say goodbye and hopefully without incident. The reports were that Paul started crying and begging and then threatened, threatened to kill her, pulled out a shotgun and strapped her into the sexual device that he had invented, put a gun to her cheek and pulled the trigger. His handprints were found on her body. He then turned the gun around and shot himself and landed on the gun. When the roommates came back, they found the bodies here and called the police. Hugh Hefner was notified and then Hugh Hefner called Peter Bogdanovich. Now since then, the friends, Hugh Hefner and Peter Bogdanovich, this actually caused their friendship to end. Peter Bogdanovich would eventually, two or three years later, write a book blaming Hugh Hefner and the fact that Dorothy felt trapped working for Hugh Hefner and didn't like him and didn't want that life uh, for her being involved with Paul and everything that went on. And Hugh Hefner would end up having a stroke and would blame the book and him not responding to those allegations over years as being the reason why. So he would then come out and say that he believed that, that um, Peter Bogdanovich wasn't owning up any responsibility to his part in it and was also accusing him of, um, see after Dorothy died, Peter Bogdanovich kept in touch with Dorothy's family and um, Dorothy's younger sister, he would eventually, when she turned 20 years old, Peter Bogdanovich married Dorothy's younger sister who he had comforted for years after the death. And Hugh Hefner had accused him of that. And so their friendship has never repaired. Uh, Peter Bogdanovich and Dorothy's younger sister were married for 13 years before being divorced. And it sadly all ended here at the age of 20 years old. Now, these are a couple of the crazy things that happened afterward. One of the things that happened, my mom told me, was that because Dorothy was still married to Paul, Paul's family inherited all of Dorothy's assets, I believe. Now I'm gonna try my best not to trespass, but over here on this side, if you look up the little sidewalkway, there's a window back there. And supposedly that window that would be located right over here was the room that it happened in. After Paul Snyder killed Dorothy Stratton, as she was strapped to that contraption, he abused and raped her corpse before killing himself. When his roommate, Dr. Kushner, came back, he saw the door closed and thought that they maybe had made up or I don't know, he, he, he saw the door closed. He had tried to call and there had been no answer, so he opened the door and saw them both uh, covered in ants and both were dead and Dorothy was 
strapped to that contraption. Unbelievable. It said that Hugh Hefner paid for the cemetery plot and the burial and the tombstone for Dorothy Stratton. And Hugh Hefner himself would also say that no one that he's ever seen in Playboy was more alluring and had what Dorothy Stratton had. There have been two movies, to my knowledge, made about this story. One was Jamie Lee Curtis portraying Dorothy Stratton, and the other was Muriel Hemingway portraying Dorothy Stratton. But like I said, Eric Roberts gives an amazing performance as Paul Snyder. I just can't even imagine taking someone's life like that that you claim to have loved. Being that obsessed over someone that you couldn't say goodbye. So unfortunate. Jennifer Sissom, I hope you enjoyed this vlog. And uh, a side note is that the Red Hot Chili Pepper song, Californication, was written about Dorothy's story. Now this is pretty cool. I actually noticed this in the neighborhood a little bit ago. As I was walking by, they have all these plants here and they've named a lot of them various things um, or whatever they're, they are. But a couple of them have like famous names. Like this one's named Elizabeth Taylor. Um, this one's named Medellin. Um, Pink Promise. Apricot Candy. This one's called Touch of Class. Um, there were a couple of funny ones. Like there was a Betty White one somewhere. This one's named Henry Fonda. I love stuff like that. Pretty cool. Oh, that back, back one is named uh, Paul McCartney. Bewitched. Over the Moon. Great Century. Aw, oh, Princess of Monaco. Gentle Giant back there. Gina Lola Brigida. There's Betty White. Now I've actually known about this story for a very long time. My mom is a very big fan of the movie Star 80. So I know she's gonna enjoy seeing this one and uh, Eric Roberts is one of her favorite actors because of this movie. I can't recommend it enough. It was made in, I believe, 1983. Now I actually told John Juan I'm gonna be kind of close to his neighborhood today, and he said he might be home by the time I'm over here, so I'm gonna text him and see if he's home, and if so, we'll pop over and say hi to him. Oh, that is great. Look at that. And we're getting to see it happen. Oh, Janis Joplin. All right, so I'm gonna meet up with John over here at, uh, over at Venice Grind, see if we can find him. Don't you love the name of that place? Oh, nice. Oh, that's Sandlot right there. Oh, heck yeah. That was Benny the Jet right there. I think it's over here by the uh, Grand V Market or in the Grand V Market. Well, I'm looking for him. I do love all the old signs up there. That old 76 sign, Rail 76. I think I might be in the wrong place. I think it might be next door. Well, let's go look. Oh, you know what? I was in the wrong place. Still a pretty cool place though. I think he's over here. I see another coffee sign. Cool, vintage store. Oh yeah, by the way, I was supposed to do a vintage uh, vintage store tomorrow for the vlog, but the guy who owns it actually sent me a, a message and asked me if we could do it next week. He's a little busy, so the uh, the best store that I found in Los Angeles, you'll get that next week instead. There we go. There he is. Well, we're back over here at the market. John's uh, John wants to have some lunch here.
John was telling me that he performs over here in this corner sometimes and that this whole market gets really packed. I've actually never come over and seen them do any of those shows, but he also said he helped move this piano in. Taking the opportunity to play a little while we wait for our food. Oh yeah, this stuff is so good. All right, we're done eating, and I'm uh, I'm actually gonna head over and meet John over at his place. He's got a few things he wants to show me, and he accidentally he bought a memory card that doesn't work for his camera, so he's gonna give it to me. I just drove past this, and I had to show you guys. Look at that, some Prince art. And then I know my mom will appreciate seeing this one. Greg Allman, she loves Greg Allman. This is kind of crazy. We were wondering like why uh, some of the footage that John had filmed wouldn't work. And what I noticed is he has the same camera I do, except he has the T1i and I have the T7i. So this is the very first generation of my camera. That's kind of cool to see actually. All right, John and I live about 10 miles away from each other and the GPS says it's gonna be a 55 minute drive. Yikes! You know, there are so many taco trucks in this town, it's hard to know which ones could possibly be good. You can't even, they can't even really develop a reputation because there are just so many of them now. Sun's out, bun's out. That sign says, join us for the Festival of the Chariots. It's a Hare Krishna event. The license plate says Russ T. Wow. When Dorothy had finally had her last straw, she would tell friends that Paul was actually obsessively calling her between 10 and 20 times every day. He stopped me in the middle of a walk. I think he's decided he needs to go to Tailwaggers. Did you decide you need to go to Tailwaggers? Well, good evening, my friends. I've wanted to do this vlog for quite a while and I've actually been putting it off because, well, obviously it was just a really sad one. A 20-year-old girl had her life ended by a obsessed boyfriend, husband, just someone who wouldn't let go. And uh, so it was sad to know all the things that had happened there and then to go see it. But um, I think everybody should know about it. So there we go. The story of Dorothy Stratton. Have a great night, everyone. I'll see you all tomorrow. Good bye.